What's up, everybody? I'm Megan. This is my husband, Carrie. What is cracking? Today, we're talking lies, deception, oh crazy gosh. thought life, the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the That's truth. That's right. And some Missy Elliott on another episode <laughs> of MC, MC Unpacked. Unpacked. You know, we're in the new year. That's right. But there are people who are following Jesus and they just feel stuck. Yeah. Stuck, discouraged. Or maybe even like, maybe they've been doing this journey of faith for a while, but like, how do I move forward? And how do I, like, where do I go with this thing? And I just, we're in the series at church right now. Yeah. And we're really hitting on all that stuff because there's ways to move forward and to grow. Right. But there's work to do. And I don't think people want work to do. You know right, what because I'm I think everybody, when you feel stuck, you kind of feel exhausted, right? You, oh, so <laughs> to, anticipate, to anticipate trying to do more work to get unstuck can feel overwhelming, but um, there, there are answers, right? Yeah, there are. And so we're in this series called Thirsty. Thirsty. So, uh, do you see me working on my phone? Oh. Always the cue. You've no, got to help carry. Oh, I'm looking at my phone again. <laughs> I'm going to set the timer now. You carry the podcast for a second. When I put my hand down and look up at you, we're good to go. All That's right. That's the secret signal. All right. All right. Great. Go. You fix the timer because you guys, we know that uh, we want to be good stewards of your time, but really we're just going to have some fun on here today as we talk about what it looks like to get unstuck and um, what are some of the solutions for that. And We're in a series. Where are we? <laughs> Baby. I, I never can give you good cues. No, well, I mean, we get to talk about whatever we want to on yeah, this podcast. Yeah, but we're, so. tonight specifically, we're following up from the sermon that I just preached the week before this podcast. That is true. And we're in a series called... Thirsty. Based on... Those who hunger and thirst after Matthew righteousness five. shall be filled. So it's hunger That's and right. thirst. Yeah. But the key is not just... Are you thirsty? Because we got some listeners, some watchers, some viewers that are probably a little thirsty for the wrong <laughs> thing. Uh, so obviously, yeah, what's, the, what's your hungry and thirsty Jesus, for matters. <laughs> right. He didn't say if you're hungry and thirsty, you'll be filled. What does he say? If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, righteousness you'll be right. filled. Yeah. And so um, we, we actually are doing a little double release when this podcast comes out. Normally, we're about a two week delay. Um, but this week, uh, this podcast is going to drop. Uh, this week, it is currently at the time of this recording, the twenty third. Yeah, of for January. everybody who's listening to this, like next yeah. year, yeah, or next decade, and and you, good you, on you. You want to supplement <laughs> this podcast with our series Thirsty, yeah, which we are doing in the month of January and February right. of twenty twenty three. And uh, if you're it's listening, twenty three, baby. Who said that? It's twenty twenty. I didn't. I said twenty twenty four. No, you did not. Yeah. You're still living flag. in last year. You're still. <laughs> what it's like being married to no I'm kidding, I'm kidding. wow so here's the point uh, the point is this we're, we started a series about spiritual formation mm -hmm. because people are stuck people are having a hard time moving forward and I think that most people either they they realize it maybe they don't realize it that uh, our lives are driven and organized from the internal yeah. not the external yeah so in other words what's motivating us what's fueling us what's uh, what's triggering us is it happens externally, but it's driven from the yeah. internal. And that's because and that's have, complex. It is complex. Yeah. And it's because we have a spirit. Right. And and you could supplement the word spirit with the word heart, heart not or, the organ, the heart, <laughs> but like yeah. your, your, your heart. And maybe you could say gut, but that maybe gets yeah. a little wonky. The place, the control center from the which will. you make decisions from, right? It is the yeah. command center yeah. for everything you do. It is the place where choice happens yeah. and, and your spirit is being formed by your choices and by your experiences. Right. And I think that's the beauty and, and the, the brutal, I should say, yeah. the beauty and the brutal. And that is because it's being formed currently. Yeah. Your Every experiences day. Have, have, have shaped and formed your, yeah. your spirit, but also your current choices are. Yeah. And that matters because when we become a believer, a follower of Jesus, we're given a new life. Yeah. Uh, and so, but, but I'm still here, right? right. So I didn't I get resurrected as a new character. We didn't just become like perfect individuals no. when we decided to follow Jesus. No. No, we actually are uh, being transformed daily. Well, it, we are being transformed, we <laughs> but we want to be transformed into the likeness of Christ, yeah. or to the righteousness. Yeah. Which means what? 
the righteousness of Christ. Well, righteousness righteousness means right standing with God. And so I think that's the goal is when I recognize that I've been saved, that, that God loved me so much. He sent his son Jesus to pay the ultimate price for me. Like no matter what my mistakes are, no matter what my story is, like God chose me, God loves me. When we recognize the grandioseness, is that a word? It is now. Okay. Of that, our, our response should be, I want to do everything I can do to follow Jesus. And to follow Jesus means I am doing everything I can to model my life after him, Great. after his word. Now, don't tune out. Some of our people are like, oh, I don't know if one of those Just chill out because you're probably stuck. Yeah. You're probably not moving forward. You're probably, may, maybe you're listening and you've been in the same place in your spiritual walk for years maybe decades, depending on how long. And and maybe this is the component you're move, missing because your spirit's being formed, which means that we need a a transformation, right. a, a renovation of the spirit, of our right. heart. And that is a, it's a process. Yeah, and maybe you're listening and you're like, I've heard all of this before. I've been in church for a while. Whatever your excuse might be, can I just say, we're going to give you some practical steps totally, here, but we're yeah. setting the stage for the fact that all of us, no matter where we are in a walk with Jesus, yeah. all of us need uh, transformation. And again, this is this is corresponding with the series Thirsty. And so uh, we, we're, we just finished week two of the series um, and we're talking about the dimensions, the, the six dimensions of a human. And not that we're trying to get creepy, like, like, um, <laughs> I, I see dead people kind of dimensions, not all, like, all I think M. about is stranger things. That's not all I like think stranger, about. <laughs> not like the upside down. We're not talking about the Demi Gorgons here. We're just talking about the dimensions that you, you understand. Like different parts of who we are. Right. Cause we're three dimensional yeah. in that I, I am not on a piece of paper. I, I, I have a height a width that's a little wider than I want it to be (laughs) and a depth that's getting a little, yeah, you get the idea, but that's just, that's just the construct of the physical body that I am in. Mm -hmm. But when we look at a person, there are, there's so much more to a person that person, a person, there's so much more to a person than what you can just see with your eyes. For instance, you get that. Uh, we've been married for all, you know, we'll be going on 23 years in a few months and, and we didn't, I fell madly in love with your body. Wow. Thanks, babe. <coughs> but I didn't only fall in love yeah. with the physical. I also fell in love with your spirit, with your drive, with the way that you think things. Now, I'm not still in I'll love with tell- that. Keep telling me all the good I, things about me. The way that me. you feel things, the way that you were <laughs> had a vision for the future. So it was the multi dimensions of yeah. who you are that I fell in love with. And I and think even with that, we're still learning about one another because totally. there, there's so much yeah. that makes up a person. Yeah, absolutely. And, but all I'm trying to communicate with this, I think hopefully I'm maybe overdoing it is, <laughs> is, is identifying that we have, we're, there's multiple facets to who we are. Yeah. And, and that means if we, if we're going to see God do a transformation in our body, we need transformation to take place at all levels yeah. of the dimensions of who we are. Right. Right. And, and so just, I'm going to real quickly give you those six dimensions and so you can track it, go back to week one of Thursday, which I forget the exact date, but you can find it on the YouTubes. Yeah. It'll have everything that you I think need there. It was there. the 14th it was of January, the, of the, of 2024. 2024. <laughs> And uh, these dimensions uh, matter. They make up every human. And those six dimensions are thoughts Mm -hmm. and feelings, which we could combine into one and call it the mind. Yeah, because it's part of your mind. Correct. Not the physical brain, but the mind. So they are inseparable. You cannot have thoughts without feelings. You cannot have feelings without thought. Right. Every thought that you have has a feeling attached. Has a feeling attached to it, whether it is positive or negative, whether it is repulsed by the thought or it is attracted to the thought. So, but we're going to call those different dimensions. Yeah. And and that's what we're going to dial into tonight. Right. Today, you don't know what time it is right now. Whatever be, you're listening to this podcast, thirty in the afternoon or four thirty in the morning, but we won't tell you that. <laughs> so, thoughts, feelings, your spirit, which we've already talked about. That's yeah, your, that's your, your heart, heart. Your, the will. And that's the command center. Then the body, that's the physical manifestation of who I am. But the body has desires. Right. It has things that it wants. It hungers. It thirsts. Mm-hmm. It has desires for pleasure, mm-hmm. um, et cetera. Then there's a social construct context of our life. And that matters because yeah, it, it is impacting who we are and we are impacting our social right. context. And then lastly is our soul. 
And our soul is like the operating software that is happening behind the scenes that connects everything together. And it is either moving towards health or away from health. And we know this, whether you're a Christian or not, because of the last three years, there became a huge like trend towards soul care. Right. Because we started to realize after the pandemic, holy crap, something's not right. Right. I'm struggling with depression, but I don't know what's fueling it. I'm struggling with anxiety. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't feel as energized or I feel extremely happy. But yeah. And so we realize there is something that is firing behind the scenes, like an operating software on your phone. Yeah. And that is our soul. Right. And just like on your phone, you don't realize it's there until it malfunctions mm -hmm. or it needs an update. Now, you, your, your operating software is the thing that tells you when you unlock your screen and you tap an app to email, the operating software tells the phone to open up the app, prepare an email. When you begin to type, then it tells the phone what letters are being produced. Mm -hmm. It's firing behind the scenes, but you don't realize it's there until there's a malfunction or it needs an update, just like your phone needs yeah. software updates. Yeah. So all of these dimensions, I just sounded like an Italian from New York. All of these dimensions <laughs> are necessary components of who we are. Absolutely. And we need spiritual <laughs> transformation. Absolutely. It was close, baby. <laughs> we need spiritual transformation in all of these right. levels. Right. I feel like you want to jump no, in here. Okay, go for it. Okay. You're you're on a you're on a roll. I'm on a tear. We're ten minutes in. I hope people are still listening. Even if they're not, you know what our producers are here. I mean they're listening. Yeah. Maybe they are. I think they're taking a nap right I'm now. Listening. No, I'm kidding. So each of these dimensions need spiritual transformation. And we started uh, week one unpacking the facets of the six dimensions. Right. And then week two, we, we dove into thoughts. Right. Because our thought life is wild, right? Oh, yeah. Like I imagine if you're tuned in and listening right now, like you can acknowledge there are some crazy thoughts that run through your mind yeah. during the day. Or for some of you, there's some really discouraging thoughts that you're yeah. constantly battling. Um, or lustful thoughts. Lustful thoughts, self-deprecating thoughts. thoughts. Um, angry thoughts. There's insecure thoughts. There's oh. prideful thoughts. Yeah. There's so many Arrogant different things thoughts, that we struggle yeah. with in our minds. And so one of the, one of the ways that we've got to address the need for transformation is in our thought life. Absolutely. And so that's it's where we're It's in our at. thought life where humanity first turned away from God. We hit on this on Sunday. Um, when, when the devil showed up to Eve in the garden of Eden, he presented a thought he said, did God really say? Mm -hmm. It was a thought that he landed in her mind or mm -hmm. presented her with. And it was in that moment, that was the genesis, <laughs> pun intended, the genesis <laughs> of the fall of humanity. And if it's in our thoughts that we first moved away from God, the beauty is that it's in our thoughts where change began and right. we, we can experience our greatest freedom as humans. Yeah. And so on, on this past week and Sunday, we talked about the power of thought, how um, it, it, we have the ability to choose. Absolutely. We don't choose every thought, do we? No, because you can't do that. Sometimes you just... I could say something that frustrates you and immediately... Immediately. Some, something, a, a thought pops in your mind and associated with that is a, a feeling. feeling. And you don't choose your feelings. Right. And you don't choose every thought. But what do we get to you choose? You get to choose what you do with that Great. thought. Great. So no matter what the circumstances, no matter what kind of thought pops into your mind, you have a choice of what to do with that thought. And that's a really cool thing because God wired our, our minds that way. Mm -hmm. I, one of the, I geek out over science and the Bible and how it all works it together. And, and I just Every time love, I hear the word science, I think of Nacho Libre <laughs> and his skeletal. I don't believe in God. I believe but, in science. But God and science baptized. work so beautifully together. Yes. And the way that God formed your mind is this, uh, this ability to choose your thoughts. It's our, our, our brains. You are, choose what you dwell on. Yeah. Our, our brains are neuroplastic, which means that they actually, you, you get to actually shift and change your thoughts. Great. You have the ability to do that. So not the first initial thought, but you have the ability to change your thoughts Great. and to build upon those thoughts. So and thoughts determine the direction of everything that I do yeah. from evoking feelings that frame my world to motivating my actions. Yeah. So if 
we're going to have spiritual renovation, spiritual transformation. If I'm going to shift from being stuck, being constantly frustrated or self-deprecating, then I have to choose to allow God to yeah. do a renovation here. Remember, I my spirit is being formed by my choices and experiences. Yeah. Which means that my thoughts can be transformed. Right. Into the likeness of Christ. And we talked about this on Sunday uh, and I don't want to dwell on all the details. My main purpose, I left on Sunday because, you know, uh, we try to stay within a certain time frame and, and honor people's times. And I just knew I couldn't get into the rest of the message. And I was actually so grieved because I think there's some pieces that people need. Yeah. I need. Yeah, we all need. Yeah, I need. There's not a person on the planet that does not struggle with their thought life. Right. That's so, a fact. I think that every single one of us needs this. We Probably need to, not our producer, Katie, but it's possible. We'll find <laughs> we out. We need to recognize the dangers in our thought life. She just and we flicked need her to hair learn. off camera, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we need to recognize the dangers in our thought life and right. learn how to respond in a way that's going to lead to transformation. Totally. Yeah. And so a couple of things that are important to note is your thoughts set the boundaries for what your spirit chooses. Wow. So it doesn't determine fully it, but it sets the boundaries. So right. um, that matters because sin is born in choice. Yeah. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, I don't want to dive back into the message, but the point is there's there's four different ingredients to thought, ideas, images, information, and your ability to think for ourselves. And the two biggest one are ideas. And ideas are, they are, um, they are, they're abstract. Yeah. They are models of assumptions of reality. Um, there, there are ways that we develop our, our patterns of, uh, of, of interpretation due to yeah. experience. And so anyways, I don't, we I don't all have go... ideas about how life works, about yeah. what's right and wrong. We all have our own ideas based on our experience. Some of us based on how we're raised, right. some of right. us based on pain that we experienced. I, all right. of us have ideas, ideas and ideals yeah. and ideals can be shared socially. Yeah. I, uh, for instance, um, the American dream, life, liberty, yeah. and the pursuit of happiness. That is shared socially among the majority of Americans. Right. The majority of Americans believe that we deserve freedom. The majority of Americans believe we, <laughs> I burped. We but should, we all have ideas of what freedom looks correct, like. Correct. <laughs> that's correct. That's, but you, yeah. you probably fit into a category yeah. of another social context totally. that shares that ideal. Yeah. We share the, the ideal that every child should have uh, a, a, a way to get an education for next to nothing. So there's ideas that are shared, but then we also have images. Yeah. Now I'm not talking about a picture that you see, but an image is more a, like it's a construct that is concrete or specific based upon our ideals. Right. And it's always encompassed in feeling and it fuels uh, or is fueled by our perception mm -hmm. of what is happening. Images are like the fuel, the should and ought yeah. statements. Like, images we all have a picture of what a perfect marriage should look like or Correct. uh the my i have a husband and he should behave this, this way, way in order for our marriage to be Correct. awesome and images can be they are benign they yeah. can be good they can be negative healthy or unhealthy but but there are things that are fueling our thoughts and what's important to note before i move on any further is it is in the images where Satan lured Eve away from God. So he started with the thought, did God really say, did he really say you should not eat of the fruit? It was a thought. Yeah. But he followed the thought with the statement that created an image, you surely will not die. And it was in this space that, that Satan planted an idea followed with an image that God is wrong and not to be trusted and that there is an image presented that a better life might be out there than the one that God presented to me. Yeah. I just have to take it. Right. And this is the construction of all temptation. Right. God is presented as depriving us mm. as believers by his commands of what is good. Yeah. It's an image. Yeah. No, what God said, it was written years ago. It's old school. It's old hat. It was a great idea then when there was a lack of education, but we have a better understanding now. So I think that there might be a better way. And this is the construct of all temptation. So then we think and we take matters into our own hands and we act contrary 
to his plan. Mm-hmm. And there's this thought and this idea and this image that leads to pushing God out of our thoughts. Yeah. That's why Paul was constantly in the New Testament trying to say, hey, listen, you have, a, a, you have to put on the new self, which is being renewed. This right. is Colossians 3.10. It's being renewed. And that, I, that imagery is beautiful because it's as if Paul is saying, you don't just one time you pray a prayer, ask Jesus into your life, and now you have all the thoughts you need. No, it's right. renewed. It's a constant renewing right. in the knowledge after the image of its creator. Right. So he's telling us we got to do it constantly, and he's telling us where we renew our knowledge. Well, right. It's an, it's an exchange, right? It's, yes. It's uh, an exchange of my way and Great. my ideas Great. for God's way and God's ideas. Exactly. Yeah. Like even in, you use the illustration of marriage in that, I mean, the hardest part of marriage is expectations, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, I'm boiling it down, right? Okay, there's pain That's points. That's definitely that, a hard part. There's pain points all throughout, but you have an expectation of how I should behave, mm-hmm. how I should respond to your shortcomings. Absolutely. I have an idea of how you should behave and, and how it's wrong. you should respond <laughs> to my shortcomings. There's a few and far between. And, and real healthy marriages, when we stop putting you into the box of my expectations and I start living to be what you need me to be. Right. It's, a tra- it's an exchange right. of ideas and images. And that's what... This, this idea and concept of renovation of our thoughts is the exchange, like you said it very beautifully. It's saying, God, okay, I'm going to set my ideas and images of what should and what ought to be yeah. aside, and I'm going to accept what you have a- given to us through the word, yeah. and I'm going to let that be the reality. Right. Which is foundational because that means you Huge. have to actually know what the word of God says. Huge. If you're going to exchange the the thoughts uh, and you, ta- you say, I want God's thoughts and not my thoughts, you're going to have to actually know what God's thoughts are. And those are found in the word of God, right? And right now you realize you jumped ahead of the notes, did. didn't you? Oh, you did. Okay, Talking high about five. the Fist exchange. Bump. Fist bump. Um, okay, so what we did Sunday is we, we broke this down a little bit and... Um, and then I I, wanted, I dove into the da- the five dangers in our thought life, and I only got to two of them. Yeah. So I'm gonna try to get through all five of them again. I'm gonna go short through this because I really crushed into the second one on uh, week two of Thirsty. Uh, you can find that on all platforms, I believe YouTube, Spotify. I think it's on all platforms. So I hope so. Yeah, for sure the YouTubes. <laughs> and. Uh, and so here's the five dangers of our thought life. Number one is pride. Yeah. Pride is this overconfidence in my own opinions. It's arrogance of theology or tradition. I was just on a podcast with some close friends and uh, their, their podcast is called Bros, Bibles, and Beer. And I just love these guys. And they all have kind of different variances of faith. And, and one of them is kind of in a semi-deconstruction kind of, but rebuilding. And I love talking with them because... He is totally open to exchange of information, yeah. and that's teachability. Yeah, and in, I, even in, in recording with him, I found myself struggling to listen because I was so convinced of my own theological opinions. Yeah, and don't you think? I mean, this is something that we all struggle with. I I think that the majority of us struggle with pride and overconfidence in my opinion. Then I just think that's something to be aware of because the scripture says pride comes before a fall. Totally. <laughs> and uh, and teachability is probably one of the most underrated, yeah. undervalued character qualities today. If you are in True. Gen Z or if you are in Gen Y or you are, is that, are we Gen Y? We are? We are not. What is Gen Z? No, Gen Y is millennials. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I got, yeah. X, Y, Z. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I space a little bit. If you're a younger millennial or in Gen Z, the greatest thing you can do is be teachable. Right. We're elder millennials. Yeah, we are. So we're, we're that crossover we're between, we're <laughs> definitely elders, between Gen <laughs> X and millennials. So we love technology. We call them boomers and we still don't have the same level of entitlement. Yeah, I, I do think it's one of the most underrated uh, skills is actually just being able to ask the question, what can I do better? How can I learn? What What do you see in me that needs to change? I think most of us don't ask those questions totally. because we don't want to be told we're wrong and we don't want someone to... Uh, well, maybe no, that's just I'm, me. Just, listen, you keep going. <laughs> I, you should speak for yourself. Speak yeah, from for your, me, your heart. I don't, I don't necessarily want to be told that I'm wrong because I feel pretty confident in my opinion or in my decision making or the the uh, 
train of thought that I'm on. I feel pretty confident in it. And so I think most of us struggle there. I think one of the things um, I've been really proud of um, lately about our daughter, Avery, and playing volleyball, volleyball. is um, she's 14 years old. And so just right in the middle of her teenage season of life. And the thing that I'm so proud of is that after every practice and after every game, she goes to her coach and she says, what can I do to get better? What did you see that I need to work on? And I'm like, man, that teachability is incredible. It is setting her up for success because she's positioning herself to learn. And um, you just don't see that all the time. And so I'm just encouraged by her teachability. And Pastor Carrie left for that entire conversation I was just having. Well, it wasn't a conversation because you weren't here. I was so. in the room. I was I mean, getting a Lecrox. <laughs> Sponsored by LaCroix. That's uh, great. Yeah. So what that means is you need a godly mentor. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah <coughs> we all do. That's the And this is not some like secular humanistic psychobabble where you just think good thoughts, you'll be good, and manifest everything, blah, blah, like blah. crush the turtle from Finding Nemo. Sure. Your voice rock, right now. You so totally rock. This is the need of an exchange of Christ-centered values based upon did you like that <laughs> just in once this is the most ADD podcast ever <laughs> this is the most I beg not, to differ like this listeners one would you please I mean, put you in the and comments <laughs> and rate the most this is definitely not the most when we had Holly Wagner on she didn't know what to do it was like what in the world is happening <laughs> Michael Whittle just stared at me for 15 minutes so anyways and back to the point right where are we at you need a godly mentor <laughs> I just like to stall out and see how you handle it. Yeah, you need somebody who loves the Lord, who they don't have to be ages older than you, but they need to be more seasoned in the faith. They need to be experienced in the faith. And really, I think the greatest qualifier is they need to have gone through some knockdown, drag out moments, and they stood the test of time. Yeah, that's true. Because that can happen at a lot of ages. Yeah, it can. And, uh, And so, yeah. So the number two, the dangers of your thought life is not knowing the truth. For sure. And this is what Megan was alluding to earlier and really where I spent the most of my time on Sunday um, is that you, you, you need the antidote to that. It, it, we don't, we live, we're so far beyond the information age. That was more like when you and I were younger yeah. at the beginning of the World Wide Web, which is what <laughs> WWW stands for, for all my, my young ones out there. In the beginning of the internets, it was the information age, information at your fingertips instantaneously, yeah. but we're so far past yeah. that. And now we're in the age of fake news. You yeah. hear that all the time. So the question is, what information is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Right. There's a reason that when you stand before a court of law, they make you say all three things. We Do you pro- swear to tell the truth? So there's a difference between the truth and the lie. The whole yeah. truth. So I'm not going to leave some portions out and nothing but the truth. I'm not going to add things to it. And the culture we're living in right now would say that truth is... Uh, whatever it is yeah it's relative what is your truth but but that's just actually not it's horse shenanigans i wonder how close we can get to cussing but not cuss on this podcast (laughs) horse shenanigans yeah so our antidote to that is it's not going to be a shocker but you need a routine of reading the scripture and it needs to be daily because yeah. you're going to miss some days, but it needs to be a routine of reading the scripture. It, yeah. It is our truth for life. That's right. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is saying, I am the truth. And the, and the scripture tells us that to know the truth and the truth will set you free. So right. to know Jesus, there is freedom. And to know Jesus means we have to know his word. Yeah. And it, you read a story of this in the Old Testament, Joshua chapter one. Yeah. Uh, Josh was taken over for Moses and God's speaking to him. And he says, I love the message paraphrase of this. He says, don't for a minute, let this book of revelation be out of mind. Yeah. I love it. Don't for a minute. Don't. So there's not like wiggle room here. Ponder and meditate on it day and night, making sure you practice everything written in it. So don't just read it, meditate on it and, and do then something. Do it, <laughs> and then you'll get where you're going. Then you will. Yeah succeed which means you need to know scripture memorize scripture and rehearse scripture right, right. uh this it, we transforming our thoughts transforming our ideas and our images is more than just thinking better thoughts right in fact a transformation of the heart this spiritual reformation if you will internally it will never happen from sheer will alone it is it is a daily process 
but it also means I'm replacing. Right. I'm not just thinking better thoughts. Yeah. I'm replacing the old garbage thoughts. Well, the scripture also says, take captive every thought that's not from God and make it obedient to Christ. So that means I'm going, huh, this thing that I'm thinking right now, does this align with the word of God? And if it doesn't, then I've got to choose what aligns with the word of God and dismiss the other thought. Right. And that takes work and it takes knowing what the Bible says, right? Right, right. What are right. some examples of that? Uh, we talked about this in the past message, and that is, you know, um, if you're feeling shame, mm. then you need to replace the thoughts of shame with the scripture. And the scripture says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, which means that God no longer looks at you through the lens of what you've done in your past. There are consequences yeah. for our actions, but God is saying, I've got greater days for you in your future. If you're dealing with fear, you can read in Isaiah where it says that you walk through the fire fear not you will not burn though you walk through the waters fear not for you will not drown for i am with you right so there's words of scripture that you can replace yeah when the, you sorry i was just gonna no, give go more ahead. when you're feeling insecure it's reminding yourself no i'm fearfully and wonderfully made i was knit together my in my mother's it. womb like god intricately formed me he made me he created me like i am it's it's reminding yourself of the truth of god's word versus how i feel right Isn't now it interesting in, the in that scripture specifically it concludes with my soul knows it full well yeah and if you think about the operating software that means that I've done so much work renewing my thoughts, renewing my feelings, aligning my spirit with his spirit that the operating software knows it full well. Right. So that it's running behind the scenes. It's loading constantly. It's refreshing apps in the background. Yeah. And so when my soul knows it, then whatever comes at me, it's a defense mechanism like the right. Iron Dome in Israel right. before it even has a chance to permeate and get into me, inside my heart, my thoughts, my mind, my feelings. Yeah. My soul steps up and goes, no, no, we're rejecting that notion yeah. because he's fearfully and wonderfully made. But this is where I feel like so much of the work has to happen. We talked about that in the beginning of the podcast like we we said it's a lot of work if it's to, worth it let me work that's it. right uh, it there's work that's involved in transforming our thought life and this is where a lot of that work is it's actually pausing and slowing down long enough to recognize what is the thought that i'm thinking yeah. and then to say does this align with the word of god and and that takes some work to pause and say and people don't want that no people want me and you as the pastors to spoon feed them on Sunday with 35 minutes. And it better be yeah. funny. It better, <laughs> Pastor Kerry, if, if you, you don't make me laugh, I am going to be ticked. Pa Pastor Megan, if you don't mom clap me and inspire me to take over the world, <laughs> then it's, pro it's why did I even show up? And then I'm going to take this little meal. Imagine if you ate one Once time a week. A oh week. my gosh. Yeah. You would be, your body would be deteriorating. Your organs would be malfunctioning. You would not be able to go to work and pay for the roof over your heads. So this has got, as a yeah. follower of Christ, you have to do the work. Yeah, you do. And it's, it's not impossible and you don't have to overly complicate no. it but you got to do the work you have to do the work and i think sometimes we want someone else to do the work for us yeah. or we just don't like sometimes we like sitting in our negative feelings oh, i think sometimes we don't want to do the work because it, let's girl. just say that i am angry with you yeah and like I am mad and I feel justified in my anger and the reason I'm upset. And if I pause to take captive that thought, the thoughts that I'm thinking about you, and I'm like, I need to deal with this because I yep. love and honor my husband. And here's what the scripture says. And, and the Bible tells me I've got to forgive him, but I've literally had conversations in my own head before where I'm like, I don't want to forgive him right now. Like I actually want to be mad at him right. a little bit longer. And so it takes don't wanna, work. I don't want to say I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't want to ask for forgiveness because that joker he said some stuff that really ticked me off right and so and i want to dwell on it a little yeah, bit longer but that's totally. not healthy because those thoughts begin to build and then that affects my my spirit Absolutely. and and the choices that i'm going to make and how and i then treat it's contributing you. to whether or not your soul is healthy yeah so is, you have yep. to you have to slow down you have to do the work and when it says take captive the thought that's not from god and make it obedient to christ obedience is hard sometimes totally like obedience takes work to say oh i want to be angry i don't want want to forgive, but I'm going to choose to do it anyway. Great. That's hard work. Dangers in our thought life. Number three, allowing my desires to steer my thoughts. Allowing my desires yeah. is really what you were just kind of talking about. It's not actively working on spiritual transformations. And in that 
in that place, my desires will always lead to sin and a lack of my flourishing. Yeah. And it doesn't always have to be a sin. Yeah. It can just be things that aren't going to contribute to me flourishing. Yeah. Like we, I, I want to just keep watching vegging. Netflix. Yeah. I don't want to go work out. <laughs> yeah. I want to, Monday was a great rainy day and I didn't want to go work out. You know what I didn't do? I didn't work out. Yeah. So it doesn't lead to sin. No. But it doesn't lead my body to the place that I want it to be. Right. But that might be in three months might look like me standing in front of the mirror being discouraged of where I'm at right now. So all yeah. those little decisions have an impact. And I think it's important to know we are not born inherently good. No. We are born inherently evil. Yeah, that's a lie of our culture today. Yes. We are not born inherently good. We are all born with a sin nature. If you were born inherently good, you would not need a savior. That's right. And, and we perfection need a savior. would be attainable, but it's not for you. You're not Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And so every, if, if left alone, if I'm, if I am allowing my desires to steer my thoughts, then it's going to lead towards depravity. It's going to mm -hmm. lead towards destruction. It's going to lead towards vindication. It's going to lead towards anger. It's going to lead towards walking out in my lustful thoughts. Yeah. It's going to lead towards operating in a place from a place and position of greed. Yeah. James says it the best. This is probably, I think, one of the most important scriptures for Christians to remember. James 1, 14 says, but each person is tempted when he or she is lured and enticed by his, his own, own desires. Yeah. That is important. Yep. So temptation doesn't come from an outside external force. Things might be in the external, but I'm only lured to that if my desires want that. Yeah, if my desires are steering my thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. So then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. And whenever I allow my desires to steer my thoughts, I'm screwed. Now, this coming week, in week three, we're going to talk about feelings and how transformation of that. So desires and feelings can be similar, but yeah. they're not always. Yeah. Uh, th there will be a feeling attached to it. So, for but sure. For sure. <laughs> uh, but let's move on. Dangers to my thought life. Number four is the ad images that I admit into my mind. Now, we're not talking about images like we were earlier. This is actually what are we feeding our mind, our feelings, our spirit, and our soul right. with what we see, right. what we listen to, and what we contribute to with our conversations. Wow. This is profound. Yeah. And you know, I think um, whenever I think about this, inside my soul is stirred slightly because I grew up in an environment um, on the heels of the Jesus People movement. Right where hundreds and thousands of people were getting radically saved and set free yeah. from the sexual revolution, the drug revolution, yeah. going crazy, finding Jesus, and then swinging the pendulum. And I think the motive was so good. It was to, we want to keep our kids from the pain that we and baggage which we experience. And so as the pendulum swung, the, the reaction, and I say reaction because it's not necessarily a response. The reaction yeah. was to clamp down. A book came out called Turmoil in the Toy Box. Yep. And we had to throw away our 80s. Cabbage Patch dolls. We couldn't watch Smurfs. We had to watch Gospel Bill, which I love me some Gospel Bill. <laughs> we got to watch Christian cartoons, which they were horrible, but we didn't have options. We could only listen to Christian music. We couldn't listen to secular music. We couldn't watch R-rated movies. And yeah. there was this massive swing. For my family, I couldn't date. We couldn't yep. go to dances because dances led to sex every time. <laughs> and so it When we was, were teenagers, you had to nail your secular CDs to a cross. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've talked crazy. about that before. <laughs> and it, I think it was a, the motivating factor was great. Yeah. Because they're saying, hey, the images that you allow into your mind. Right. Are going to form your thoughts and your feelings. And, and, that and that's is inescapable. It is. It, and images are not just what you see. I like that you yeah. said it's what you what you hear and listen to. It's why, it, you know, the lyrics of the songs that you actually listen to. It doesn't people, have to be songs. It, uh, yeah. I can obviously it can be conversation, be conversation. it can be gossip, it can be, it can be so many things. I was just using that as an example, yeah. but the things that I'm listening to are fueling my thought life. The conversation I'm yeah. part of, whether I'm speaking consistently or not. And so you have to ask yourself now what, where I think that we could have done a better job in the eighties and nineties, 
Man, this LaCroix got me burping. Oh, Pardon my me. gosh. That smelled bad. I apologize Gross. to the listener. We'll have to beep that out or YouTube will cut <laughs> us. Um, the Where I think we got it wrong is there is a component in the scripture where Paul is talking to the church in Rome. Mm-hmm. And the church is split halfway between Gentiles and Jews. And without going into all the detail, the church was founded by Jews who became Christians. And then the Romans the, kicked them out of Rome. And so then it was just primarily Gentiles. And then 30, 40 years later, they let the Jews back in. They come to the church and they find that these Christians are not, they're not eating kosher foods. They're yeah. drinking Roman wine. They're eating pork sausage, blah, blah, blah. And the Jews lost their freaking mind. Right. And so there's more that goes into this. The point is Paul talks about this in Romans and he follows it back up in Galatians and he says that there are all things are, bene, are, are beneficial but not all things are profitable. I think I might be getting that reversed but you get the mm-hmm. idea. And he's constantly talking to Christians about personal convictions that are not salvific. Yeah. Salvific means they're not leading to salvation. Right. For instance, some Christians hold strong to the conviction I'm choosing not to listen to music that isn't edifying and uplifting to the Lord. Yeah. And others don't. Right. There's and n- it doesn't lead to salvation. It doesn't lead to, neither of those directions <laughs> lead to salvation. What <laughs> Paul was saying is, you need to have a conviction in your heart from the, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And as long as it aligns with the remainder of the word, then you need to follow that. So if you're the one here who's saying you shouldn't listen to secular music, Paul actually says you don't get to do that. Paul said, you can decide for you and your family, we don't listen to, but I can't get mad at somebody else who does. I mean, the same thing on so many levels, right? Drinking alcohol, like watching certain movies. There's so many things that apply to that. But I think that the the thing that we have to all do is be willing to be honest with ourselves. That's the thing. Thank you for coming back. That's exactly what I was coming back to. Because you know. Yeah better than anybody else, what the images that you allow into your mind do for you. Great. And is it fueling you to be more like Jesus? Is it fueling your thoughts to align with his word? Or is it fueling negative thoughts, depressive thoughts, Great. lustful thoughts, jealous, jealous thoughts? thoughts. Cause it's not just music and movies. What's another powerful medium yeah. right now? Oh, social media. It's My the goodness. most powerful medium currently and i think probably the most powerful medium in the history of humanity yeah, i would and agree that thing fuels everything within seconds of scrolling yeah and it's not only that i i'm i think social media i think <laughs> the cons outweigh the pros i'm sure that you can convince me perhaps in other ways but i i just think that their cons outweigh the pros but the algorithm built into every social media is it's watching the amount of time you stop scrolling yeah, on an image somewhere. and then it's building the feed yeah. with more images yep. like that. And you have to ask yourself, yep. is this leading me in a direction that is life giving? Is this leading me in a direction that my thoughts are, I'm, I'm able to maintain pure thoughts. Yeah. You, you have to be honest with yourself because it's different for everybody. And so if there's something that you're consuming that is leading your thought life down a path of jealousy, down a path of pride, down a path of insecurity, lust. shame, lust, you name it. If it doesn't align with the word of God, Dr- then- A drive for power, a drive for money. Yeah, then you actually have to be responsible enough to make the changes and stop feeding yourself those images, right? That's great. That, and nobody can make that choice for you. And I think probably the, there's two filters that, that that we should look through. The first would be Philippians 4, 8. Yep. Finally, whatever, brothers. Whatever is true. Yep. Whatever is honorable. Whatever, whatever is, is just, just. Whatever is pure. Whatever is lovely. Whatever, whatever is, is commendable, commendable. If there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think, think about, about these, these things. things. So the scripture is telling us what to think about. And uh, it still leaves room for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. It for absolutely you personally, does. But that's filter number one. Yeah. Another filter that you could possibly do is choose to fast from some things. Yeah. Take seven days, yeah, 14 great days, advice. 21 days, and completely remove any of those mediums yeah. or one of those mediums. And For, if you can't do that, then, that is then it probably means that that has a stronghold in your life, like a stronghold on your thoughts. It's an, it could be an idol. could be an idol. Yeah, like try yeah. and go a week or two weeks with no movies, no Netflix, no streaming services, and 
then to try it with two weeks without social media. Just see, measure the content of your soul. Where do yeah. you feel afterwards? And that lets you know what you should or shouldn't be tuning into. You know what I love about that Philippians verse that you talked about, and I think we've talked about it before, is that so many people um, in our thought lives, we struggle with feelings of depression and anxiety. And Philippians 4, 4 through 8 is specifically addressing what you think about totally. and, and how to deal with anxious thoughts, how to actually fix your attention on the right things yep. so that you don't have to battle that Great. level of anxiety. And I think there's so so many people that are listening that probably are searching for totally. how do I how do I deal with the anxious thoughts and Philippians 4 is just a great start for that yeah so we're just talking dangers in your thought life and trying to give some anecdotes antidotes yeah. anecdotes I don't want to give anecdotes I want to give antidotes yes <laughs> <laughs> very important difference pride is the first one yeah. not knowing the truth is the second allowing my desires to steer my thoughts is the third Images that I admit into my mind is the fourth. And lastly, and this is this is the devil's playground. Absolutely. It is the winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yep. And he's so crafty at it that you don't even realize it's at work until months down the road. For sure. And that is isolation. Yep. And you can be surrounded by people and still be isolated. Absolutely. You can be married. And still, and be, still isolated. be isolated. Yeah. From your spouse. You can be in a home that you, maybe you're in college and you've got six friends living in the same room. You can still be isolated. Yeah, it's it's choosing to keep everything internal. Internal. And, uh, you know, the scripture says in Proverbs 18, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. And I do think that's why many of us isolate. I think it's because I like... I want what I want, or I'm feeling insecure about myself and I don't want or anybody I'm embarrassed to share to know yet yeah, or, or I should be stronger than this. Whatever it is. Could it's be an like, image that I have that absolutely. should and the aughts. I should, I shouldn't still be dealing with this. Yeah. We should have a stronger marriage. Yeah. I shouldn't still be struggling with this porn addiction. And so because of that, I'm going to just internalize and keep that all to myself because I don't, I don't want anybody else to know. And the scripture says that when he's a, a man who isolates himself, seeks his own desires and breaks out against all sound judgment, mm. it says a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his own opinions. And I just think that isolation the place of isolation, you're left only to your own thoughts. And that's a dangerous place to be. It's a damning place yeah. to be. Because if we're left to our own thoughts, that means that, listen, spiritual transformation cannot and must not be a private thing. Yeah. It's not even a biblical concept. No. They're, like we start the road and the journey of spiritual transformation through the only way, the truth and the life, that is through Jesus. Yeah by believing in him and every step after that has to do with living my life within the community of faith fueled by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's every of, single step. That's why the church exists. It's right? why the church is the <laughs> only entity that has lasted for 2000 yeah. years, not parachurch missions, organizations. It's the church Yeah, and the church is people. And if you feel stuck, if you feel like you can't move forward, I'm just going to be honest. You have not built authentic transformational community where you don't BS with people right. and you are real and you share the real struggles. You know, a lot of us will share 80%. That's what I was going to say. If we're gregarious, we'll share 90%. Totally. If we're introverts, we might share 60%. I mean, that's a general space, but the whole point is we're always going to leave that one percentage out that we're not going to share because we're terrified of how people will yeah. respond, how they'll behave, what they'll say. Can they handle me? Yeah. And the truth is they may get it wrong. Yeah. And they may do it wrong, but that totally. doesn't mean that you should take your spiritual transformation back into the private confines of your own mind. Right. Because it's you a dangerous are place. toast here. Yeah. You are toast. And you know, I think the antidote is you need a connect group. Yeah. And that's the language we use at our church. And I'm unashamed about that. Right. It might be a small group at yours. If you don't have a church, man, we would love to help you find. Let us know where you're yeah. watching or listening from. And we'll help you. There's a life-giving church somewhere near you, and I'd be willing to bet a billion dollars there's a life-giving church with small groups right, right now, somewhere right. where you, near where you live. And, and, and stop not, making excuses. Yeah. There's no perfect church and there's no perfect people, but you need a community of faith. So you you got to you got to find some place that you can call home and belong and engage in community um, because that's 
that's how God created us. And the depth of your relationships will depend more on what you bring to the table than anyone else in that room. For sure. And if you get in a group and you just don't click, go to another group until you find the right one. And if you don't find the right one, build the right one. And I'm telling you, this is the answer. I was going to say, when we talked earlier about the need to know the word, we have a guy in our church who helped us create an amazing resource. It's absolutely free. You don't have to go to our church to get it. You can download our app, go to the connect groups tab, go to resources. And underneath there is a section called understanding the Bible. That's what I do in my connect group. And we just read the scripture and it's small chunks of the scripture over the course of two weeks. And we just let the, we answer some questions and we probe into it and God is transforming our right. minds through the process. Yeah, it's it's learning what the word of God says and how it applies to me. That's that's part of what you're talking about in that curriculum. It's it's how do I take what the Bible says and apply that to my life? And when you do that in the context of community with other believers around you, it's beautiful. and you actually take the risk of being authentic and vulnerable and sharing sharing fully totally. the full truth about who you are, about what you're thinking, about what you're processing, you you allow other people to come in and be a, a source of encouragement, a source of truth, a source of strength in your life. And we all need that. Yeah. If we're going to actually transform our thoughts, we actually need some godly community in our life that's going to challenge us with that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't stop with start with thoughts, but it starts with thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the beautiful thing about this is that God's grace has given us the strength to make it through right. this life and do trans- walk through the spiritual transformation. And we can trust God enough to know how to handle us. Yeah. And we can trust him with our life. We can trust that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts and that they're better for yeah. us. We can trust that his plans lead to our flourishing. We can trust that he's got the whole world in his hands. hands. He's got the whole yeah. world. Yeah, but it begins. And this this process of spiritual transformation is a lifelong yeah. process. Right. You and never arrive. No, you never arrive. And that's not a deterrent. That's just to mean if your aim is perfection or completion, the completion will be on the other side of glorification. The Bible says that we have justification through what Jesus gave us. In this life, we walk through sanctification. And then one day when we die, to be absent from the body is to be present with Christ and we'll experience glorification. Wow. And in that moment, we'll know the fullness of God's yeah. heart and plan. And it'll be a beautiful time. And things that we care about now won't matter then, but right. until then. Until then. Until we then. We got some work to do, yeah, right? we got some work to do. We've got some work to do. Well, listen, I hope you'll t- tune in, lean in, make sure you do us a favor. If you're enjoying this, if you like it, share this right now with another friend or at least another one of our episodes. Hit subscribe on all the channels, the buttons, the bells, the whistles. <laughs> Hit the little heart, hey, like you, it. Honestly, it really, if you write a review on any platform, it helps us. Yeah. It gets the word out. If you don't like us, you've listened for a long time to a podcast you don't like. <laughs> But I think you probably do. So help us spread the word. Uh, we, we would love to get this, the message of hope to people. That's right. And uh, experience the fullness of what God has for their lives. That's right. And if you live in Orange County, California, California come and check us out at the Movement Church. We want to meet you in person. We want check to say hi. The OCMovement.com. That's right. You can check us out on all social platforms and uh, find out when our services are. Watch us online. But thank you so much for tuning in today for another episode of MC Unpacked. Unpacked.